Hi, this is Ted Remington. I am Associate Professor of English and Director of Writing at the University of St. Francis in Fort Wayne, Indiana. Uh, this video will show you how to use Microsoft Word's Find feature to locate nominalizations, which are one of the major bugaboos of writing style, and it's something that, especially in academic writing, uh, can cause problems or, or needlessly gunk up the, the writing style that you have. Uh, and it would be nice if there was uh, an easy way to find them all. Well, with Microsoft Word, there is a way to find uh, most nominalizations fairly quickly. And let me show you how to do that. Uh, I pulled up a paper that I wrote a while back, and we'll use this as an example text. And to do uh, the finding of nominalizations, you click go up here to Find, which is right next to the uh, binocular icon. And there's a little uh, downward-facing arrow that you click on. And we'll go to Advanced Find. And here, uh, I'm going to type in I-O-N. Why am I typing I-O-N? Well, nominalizations, as the name suggests, are uh, words that end most often in I-O-N. T-I-O-N, S-I-O-N, C-I-O-N. Um, and what they are really is uh, they're words that uh, are nouns that are coming from verbs. So, for example, familiarization is a noun, but it comes from the verb familiarize, and you just throw on an ION, and suddenly you've got a noun. Um, and these are very useful words to, to use, uh, and that's why they tend to pop up a lot. Uh, and especially if you're writing about something that's a little bit abstract, there's a tendency to use these words even without thinking about it. And there's nothing wrong with using them on occasion. But if you tend to have a lot of these popping up close together in a given sentence or in a paragraph, it can leave your writing with a sense of uh, being overly abstract uh, and vague in a way that isn't helpful for getting your point across. So it would be good if we could easily find these words and see if in some cases there might be uh, ways we could replace them. So what I'm going to do is, as I say, typed I-O-N because that is the, the ending of, of most nominalizations. And I am going to then click on Reading Highlight and have it highlight all. And then I will close. All right. Uh, and here we see that, let me go up to a good example here. See, there's quite a few in there, and I'll show you that some of them are okay, and some of them uh, would be do well with some some rewriting. Um, so you see here, just scanning that we've got, you know, every word that has I O N in it has been highlighted. Uh, the I O N in the word has been highlighted, so that gives me a, a quick check of words that are suspect for being nominalizations. Now. Again, as you can see just from scrolling up and down, that there's you know there's plenty of them in there. It's not like I've avoided them entirely. Um, but my question is, are there places where it would be easy to rewrite something that has a nominalization to avoid it if I can? Now, I've just hit on this particular paragraph because I've noticed that uh, this has an example of a nominalization that really would be hard to write out of the paper and some ones that are relatively easy to write out. So this is about uh, some awards that the this particular movie that the paper is about has received and uh, it talks about nominations, you know, Academy Award nominations, Golden Globe nominations. It would be difficult to write this paragraph without using the word nomination. Uh, and that's obviously a, a nominalization, which comes from the verb nominate and is turning into a, a noun, nomination. Uh, now, there are ways I could maybe do it, I mean, uh, but there's some payoff here. So, for example, sometimes people will talk about a nomination um, and will use kind of this informal almost slang term for it called, uh, you know, a nod, say something got an Academy Award nod, uh, meaning an acknowledgement of some sort. Uh, but that's kind of 
informal jargony kind of thing that you might hear on you know some entertainment show on tv uh or in some you know like on, in people magazine or something it's probably not a word that i want to use in a academic paper so i'm going to just bite the bullet and keep these because i don't really know a good way to to rewrite uh this paragraph to avoid using this word nomination but down here i've got a sentence that has three nominalizations in it and I bet that I can get rid of at least some of them without making the without doing any damage to the, the sentence and in fact probably making the sentence much better so uh, this recognition came despite what as Gorsesky points out is an almost hardwired predilection among movie makers and movie critics to see violent conflict resolution as an essential part of mainstream cinema so uh, shun 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 right uh, and with three of those in one sentence, which is already kind of a long sentence to begin with, this sentence doesn't read terribly well in my in my opinion. So is there a way we could rewrite it to avoid at least some of these nominalizations? Well, let's see. How this recognition came. Well, the, the, the first thing that pops to mind is I could just sort of say um, these awards came despite what okay um that might be one way of, of doing it uh or how about down here we could say uh almost hardwired predilection of movie makers and movie critics to see how about uh awards came despite what as gorsesky points out uh despite how about this we'll change what to the fact that, as Gorsetsky points out, uh, movie makers and movie critics have a hardwired tendency to see violent conflict as an essential part of mainstream cinema. Okay, let's re read this and see how it works. These awards came despite the fact that, as Gorsetsky points out, movie makers and movie critics have a hardwired tendency to see violent conflict as an essential part of mainstream cinema. Now, we can argue about whether some of these you know, slight changes in meaning uh, are relevant. So, for example, I've said awards, even though I'm talking about nominations, but one could see, one could think of getting a, a nomination as an award in general sense, even if they didn't win the actual Academy Award, per se. Um, so, depending on how comfortable I am with that use of the word award, that, that works okay. Um, predilection, uh, it's kind of a fun word to say, but it probably doesn't need to be in there, and this probably works just as well. And down here, I've just gotten rid of the word resolution. Uh, and again, we could sort of think for a little bit about uh, this saying that they have a hardware tendency to see a violent conflict as an essential part of mainstream cinema is saying the same thing as saying they see a violent conflict resolution as an essential part of mainstream cinema, I think probably it works okay. I think the idea of resolution is sort of uh, implied in this phrase. I think people understand what that what I'm getting at here. So you see I've taken this sentence and got rid of three nominalizations. The sentence becomes a little bit shorter, a little punchier, um, and not quite so uh, academic sounding in the in the worst sense of that word. Uh, it's a little bit more uh, more uh, to the point, I think. So that's how you find uh, nominalizations using Microsoft Word, Word's find feature. And then uh, from that, uh, you don't want to necessarily replace all of them. But find places where you see nominalizations coming up in clusters and see if you can rewrite those sentences to avoid them.